I never thought I could become a teacher. It didn't even cross my mind. My family had barely heard of ballet. At the time we were living in Slansi, there were amateur performing arts groups there. Then a circus came to town. I saw the acrobats doing splits, lifting and bending their legs. All their movements were so splendid, oh my! I started repeating all the movements I'd seen the acrobats do. Back then, all the amateur performing arts groups would attend other amateur performances. It was wonderful. Our group was taken to Leningrad. I did a dance like a little doll at the young pioneer's palace and someone noticed me. I don't know who he was, but I owe him a deep bow of gratitude. This man told my mother that she should definitely take me to the choreography institute as it was known then. So my mom took me to Zochevo Rossi Street. There were auditions for children going on. It was a sight to behold. It was ten times bigger then than it is now, with dozens of children vying for one place. Everyone was nervous. I wasn't, though. I was totally calm. Acrobatics was my thing. It was what I did. I performed a few polkas and was accepted. We moved to Leningrad. I went to the first lesson, then I got to the tenth lesson, then the fifteenth. One, two, I didn't get what it was all about. I was so bored. Where were the splits, the bridges, the somersaults? There was none of that. Mommy, get me out of here. I can't carry on. I don't want to do this ballet. And since my mom didn't know what ballet was, she went to my teacher, Nadezhna Bazarova, and told her she was pulling me out. What on earth do you mean? Why are you doing that? Be patient. Your daughter is so talented. She'll soon realize that. Please do not do anything stupid. Please leave her in the school. And so I stayed. I studied under Nadezhna Bazarova before switching to Natalia Komkova. When I graduated, I was invited to join the Marinsky Theater, which was then called the Kirov Ballet. When I finished my dancing career, my husband and I thought about what to do next and what else I was good at. Nothing, as it turns out. I love reading. I said, Ichushka. Maybe I could become a librarian, or perhaps there's another job I might enjoy. Working at a hotel, for example. You hand out a room key, then read your book. Hand out another key, then go back to your reading. You read and read. He thought about it, thought some more, then said, don't worry, you go on vacation. He sent all my documents to Moscow. My husband did everything. My whole life was made thanks to my beloved husband, my beloved other half. He did it all for me. I would have been a nobody without him. I'd never have got anywhere or done anything without him. Teacher training courses were open for admissions in Moscow at the time. I received a message that I had been accepted onto one. When I came back from my vacation by the Sea of Crimea, 
My husband told me I was heading to Moscow for two years to study on a teacher training course. I started my studies, and after a first couple of days, I realized I didn't have it in me to be a teacher. I wasn't able to stand in front of a class and explain what they should do and how to do it. They were a really good group. Everyone was good-natured and treated me with respect. Whenever questions came up about a character dance or a classical dance, the others would turn to me and say, How does this one go, Luda? Luda, put together a routine. What do we need to do here, Luda? They even called me Ludichka, not just Luda, a real sign of affection. I gradually started getting better at it. I enjoyed it so much. I took real pleasure in studying. I wasn't particularly set on joining the teaching staff at the Leningrad Choreography Institute, now the Boganova Academy of Russian Ballet. I decided I got sent wherever I got sent, but my first teacher, Nadezhda Bazarova, would go into artistic director Konstantin Sergeyev's office every day like clockwork and say, Kostinka, take on Kabalyova. It so happened that he had a really inept class without a teacher. Sergeyev clearly thought to himself, I'll keep Nadezhna Pavlovna happy. I'll take on her Ludichka to teach this lousy class. Ludichka messes up somehow. This class needs to be kicked out of the institute anyway. And Ludichka will leave along with them. So I took on this inept class and set to thinking, how could I turn them into capable dancers, even a little bit capable? So I started thinking of what to do, batmans, toning exercises, or just jumps, 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 and more jumps to develop foot strength. In the end, I taught those children all the way through their fifth year. I had done it. My career as a teacher started from there. When you first take on a class, it's not yours yet. I don't mean because someone else has been teaching them, but because the children aren't yours yet, they're strangers to you. You try to explain them how to do a certain movement, a certain technique. It seems like they've got it one day, but then you come in on the next day and they've lost it again. And it's like this all the time, either it's working out or you're not making any headway. Then after a certain amount of time you come to class, teach a lesson and suddenly you see, you sense that these children are now yours. It's an incredible feeling. Our school is an oasis in the modern world. I say that because being a ballet dancer requires an enormous amount of work from morning till night. It doesn't allow you to get sidetracked from your work to go out on the town all the time and have fun somewhere, as today's young people are wont to do. The majority of my students are well educated. In the past, if your parents didn't tell you what to read, you would just read any old trash. But nowadays, children are so up to speed on everything. Using the internet is not the same as going to the library and selecting a book. That requires effort. But with the internet, you click a button and ping, you get the information.
Unfortunately, I'm not able to prepare for my lessons. Perhaps that's regrettable. I remember I did try once when I was younger. I decided to note down a class from an outstanding teacher and give it to one of my classes. At the time, Ninel Kurgapkin was giving superb lessons. I stayed up all night noting down her routines so that I wouldn't forget anything. I was worried I'd miss out something important. So the next day I went to the institute and gave the lesson, but it was a failure. I didn't use that method again. So what's my teaching technique now? I will notice that my students are doing a bad coup de pied and start giving them routines which end in coup de pied or a particular turn. I start putting together routines based on them. That's it. As for thinking up a particular lesson plan, I don't really do that. Apologies to any teachers watching. Girls, let's do the Batman Tandu. Focus, please, focus. Dasha, Dasha, clean the wax out of your ears and listen. I'm liberal with my praise and with my criticism. Because I'm so liberal with my praise, they take my criticism well. They love it when I show them the routines too. Oh, Ludmila Valentinovna, we were really looking forward to seeing you demonstrate it. I demonstrate the routines and say, how come I can demonstrate them to you, but you don't demonstrate them back to me? So if you want to know what my relationship with my pupils is like, you ought to ask the girls themselves. But I think we have good students here. My favorite graduate class, of course, was my very first one. It included Diana Vishnova, Sofia Gumirova, and Alisa Sakalova. I feel I was really lucky with that class, because they really wanted it and they really trusted me. All children want it. All children trust their teacher. But this was particularly true of them. We were really in it together during their studies, right to the very end. Вот верили. Это вот мы как-то прошли вот так вместе до конца. Диана Вишнева recently put on a night dedicated to her teacher Людмила Ковалева. It was a magnificent event. I honestly never believed that would happen. It was better than getting an Oscar. It was incredible. But how can I put this? I don't feel I deserve that kind of attention. To walk out on stage with everyone applauding, it's like a dream. It truly is just a dream. I sincerely feel that I do not deserve that treatment. But I reassure myself with the thought that Diana putting on this event for me means there's a chance other ballerinas will remember their teachers too and dedicate evenings to them as well. That's a very commendable thing to do.
My main goal is to teach the girls this profession. I mean, they must be able to go on tour, of course, and mustn't fall over on stage, but my main goal is to teach them the profession. I'd gladly let you in on all my secrets as a teacher, but I don't have any, not a single one. 